Grage is all the rage right now in paint color world. But which one is the most popular? That's what we're exploring today in this video. Hi there, my name is Lori Sawaya and I'm a color strategist and expert. Before we get started talking about grayish paint colors, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel so you get notified the next time I post a video. Here at the Land of Color, I hear the word grayish often. <laughs> the first thing I have to do is figure out what each person means when they use the word grayish because everyone has their own idea of what grayish is supposed to look like. Agreeable Gray from Sherwin-Williams fits the mold of grayish for a lot of people. So I'd say it's the most popular or at least maybe I'd say it's one of the most popular. In fact, uh, I have a little story to tell you. I'm in the process of building a new house and Agreeable Gray was one of only three wall color choices offered by my builder. The other choices were extra white or accessible beige. Accessible beige, I kinda, I kinda mumbled through that. It's accessible beige. So when I asked why they were offering those three colors, the answer they gave me was that they wanted to offer a white, a beige, and a grayish. Their answer kind of made me smile because it totally lines up with the feedback that I've heard about the grayish vibe that many see in Agreeable Gray, which by the way, is the color that I chose for the all over color for my new house. So here's what we're gonna do in this video going forward. We are going to do a deep dive into the four most important attributes of Agreeable Gray, which are hue, value, chroma, and LRV. Then we're gonna take a look at colors that are lighter, darker, grayer, and more colorful. Finally, I'm going to tell you what colors in other paint brands are similar to Agreeable Gray. Getting colors matched in other brands doesn't always work out uh, because the base paint and colorants from brand to brand, they vary. And some mixtures are even proprietary. So the best tactic is to find a similar color in the brand you have to use or want to use, then get a chip or sample and see if that color will work before you jump through the hoops you have to jump through to get a custom match. Um, we're gonna start with the colorography for Agreeable Gray and walk through each attribute. So first up is hue. Agreeable Gray belongs to the yellow hue family. It comes in around 2Y. So it's at the beginning of the yellow hue family, kind of over near the yellow red hue family. So when you compare it to other near neutrals in its own hue family, agreeable gray shows up as being on the warmer side of yellow. Something to note here is agreeable gray does fall into that can shift purple zone, which means it can show up as looking lavender or even bluish. It really, it all depends on the light because when it comes to all things color, the light is boss. So I wouldn't say that this is a big deal because of how colorful Agreeable Gray is, and we'll talk about chroma in just a second, but possible hue shift is something to be aware of when you test the color. So it's really important <laughs> that you sample the right way and apply two full coats and let it dry thoroughly. So next up on the colorography is value. The value scale is a range of grays between white and black that illustrates how light or dark a color looks. Agreeable gray has a value of eight, which is on the lighter end of the scale. And as far as chroma goes, <laughs> agreeable gray is a near neutral with a chroma of 0.74, which means it has a fair amount of colorfulness to it. It's closer to being a colorful color than it is to being a true achromatic neutral gray. Uh, to give you more context around that, uh, here, here it is mapped out on its Hue Family Atlas page. And with a value of eight and a chroma of 0.74, Agreeable gray fits into the near neutral bracket. 
it's right on the edge. It's right there on the brink of being a light near neutral. When we consider value and chroma at the same time, that's called nuance. Nuance is a really important word to know, and it can come in handy um, when you're assessing colors. So nuance is a good color term to know. And the pitch of nuance that agreeable gray has probably has a lot to do <laughs> with why some people consider it a grayish color. So last on our list of attributes is LRV. And I kind of have some things to tell you <laughs> about this. And LRV means light reflectance value, by the way. And I think far too many people read way too much into the LRV number. LRV is super simple. It's straightforward. <laughs> it tells you how much light a color reflects, and that's it. That's, that's its only job. That's all it does. For example, LRV doesn't tell you anything about how colorful, how white, or how gray a color looks. We just discussed agreeable gray's chroma, so you saw how that works. If you want to know about whiteness or grayness in a color, chroma is the attribute that's going to map that out for you, not LRV. The LRV for agreeable gray is 60%, which means it's going to reflect a greater proportion of light back into the space than it's going to keep. Because LRV is a measurement and tells you how much light a color reflects, it can help you predict how a color is going to contribute to the overall atmosphere. What LRV tells you about a color is different from the information that value gives us. They both speak to the luminance and the brightness of a color, just in different ways. LRV is a measured quantity. <laughs> Value is a perception, and it's all about color appearance. Uh, we could say that value makes the LRV measurement less abstract by illustrating luminance on a grayscale so you can see how light or dark a color looks. And that's why it's important to consider both value and LRV, not just LRV all by itself. So right about now, <laughs> you might be wondering, where you can find the notations I'm talking about for other paint colors. And I have two resources for you. If you're looking for colorographies for other popular paint colors, you'll find about 300 of them on my website, thelandofcolor.com. Just tap on uh, the colorography lab tab in the menu. <laughs> that rhymes, the colorography lab tab. And um, I also have the color DNA table that you can subscribe to month to month. And this is where you can find the hue angle, hue family, value, chroma, and LRV for major paint brands paint colors. I'd say we have about 3,000 colors in the database as of right now, uh, but we're constantly adding new colors, like almost daily. So let's move on to talking about trim and ceiling color options for agreeable gray. For trim, I suggest that you get chips of extra white, snowbound, and I'd add in their alabaster. Yeah, that's good because that will give you a nice range of whites and off whites for comparison. For the ceiling, uh, you could use agreeable gray on both the ceiling and the walls. That's an option. Uh, that's a popular designer option. Um, but if you would prefer a lighter color on the ceiling and you don't want to use one of those three colors of white that I just mentioned, uh, maybe grab chips of white heron and downy, both from Sherwin-Williams, because they share similar color attributes to agreeable gray. They're just lighter, so they're the same. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, they're the same. They're just lighter than agreeable gray. And I do want to point out that I'm talking about White Heron from Sherwin-Williams. I think I said Sherwin-Williams already, but I want to make sure you know that it's not Benjamin Moore because Benjamin Moore also has a color named White Heron. And you need to know that the two colors are very different. So if you're wanting to go a smidge darker on the walls than Agreeable Gray, uh, the color you should check out is Northern Cliffs by Benjamin Moore. And I have a fun fact for you about Northern Cliffs. 
Um, it is very similar to the super popular Bedford uh, gray paint color that Martha Stewart, Stewart, Martha Stewart made popular because she used it on the exterior of her kind of famous uh, Bedford Farms estate. My ice maker is going. I don't know if you guys are going to hear that, but that's my ice cubes. Sorry. So anyway, that was, I have to get back on track here. Um, I was talking about Bedford Gray, um, the Bedford Gray paint color from Martha Stewart and Northern Cliffs is darker than Agreeable Gray, similar to the Bedford Gray from Martha Stewart and it's really pretty. Okay, so um, I have to figure out where I am. What did I tell you guys about? I told you about the trim, I told you about the ceiling. Um, okay, so if you feel like Agreeable Gray is too colorful and it's uh, not gray enough for you, there's like too much chroma to it, then a really pretty option is yarn from the Joanna Gaines paint line. Um, it's also called Magnolia Home. I think it's just Joanna Gaines now though, but the color is yarn, it's really pretty. So on the flip side of that, if you think agreeable gray looks a little too dull and you'd like to bump up the chroma and get a little more colorfulness in there, then take a look at Toasty Gray from Bear. Uh, that could be the color you're looking for. And finally, here's a list of colors and other brands that aren't necessarily a match, match, but they're close because they do share some of the very same attributes. Uh, let's see, it was Benjamin Moore's Collingwood, uh, Shady from Dunn Edwards, Weathered Wood from Valspar, and you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and put Toasty Gray from Bear on this list too, uh, because it is the closest you're gonna find uh, from the Bear line to Agreeable Gray. You're not gonna find another color that's as similar from Bear um, as Toasty Gray is to Agreeable Gray. Okay, so before I go, I want to leave you with three reminders. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. If you're looking for colorographies for other popular paint colors, you'll find about 300 of them on thelandofcolor.com. And last, the color DNA table. Uh, you can subscribe to that. It's month to month. And that's where you're going to find the Hue Angle, Hue Family, Value, Chroma, and LRV, just like we discussed here, for major brands paint colors. And I'll put all those links below so you don't have to try to remember it. And I think there's also going to be a little uh, clickable tab up there in the corner that will take you right to those links if you, if you want to. Okay, gosh, that's all I have for you today. That was kind of a lot, wasn't it? But it was fine. <laughs> It was really fun and I appreciate uh, you uh, joining me to talk about color. It's really one of my very favorite things to do and um, I hope I'll see you guys next time. Thanks everyone.